Hi hey guys, Jeremy Bayless, Del Rayleigh Designs. Uh, today we're gonna go over a little bit of different things once again. You know, I always got something different going on. Well, today it's about NASA and Space Force in 2020. And I've got some hidden secrets for you that are in plain sight. So today we're, what we're gonna do, we're gonna explore God's use of NASA with his Space Force, okay? Uh, welcome to my corner, by the way. This is called Tapestry of Truth. Uh, I've been an artist all my life, so it kind of fit. Um, and additionally, it's called Tapestry of, of Truth and the Beautiful Tent of God. Uh, forgive me, space folks, but we're going to be staying under the firmament today. And I'm going to tell you about one of God's greatest gifts, NASA. And I, I kid, uh, well, not like a goat, though, but uh, rather I, I'm referring to the Hebrew word Nasa. Um, Nasa is Hebrew word number 5375 in Strong's Concordance listed in the King James Version Study Bible uh, as forgive. So in the back of my Bible, I looked up, you know, forgive and it, ha it had Nasa and a bunch of scriptures. So that's where I'm basing this from today. Um, what it is, is I Googled Nisa and I found the meanings of it to be to lift up, to bear, to take away. And additionally, it meant, uh, bearing or bore. So you guys, please forgive me today if I bore you. <laughs> Sorry. All bad jokes aside, welcome to my channel. Uh, if you will, please like and subscribe so you see upcoming uh, videos as well. Um, I hope you might, I, I hope you guys enjoy my presentations as I seek truth in my daily life and in my personal study of the Bible. Uh, my goal today is that Ewok with you too. Sorry, that, that, I promise that's the last one. Okay. I, I'm a dad. Okay. Forgive me. I have bad dad jokes sometimes. But uh, the bad jokes are over, don't worry. And let's get back to the beauty in God's tapestry of Nasa. Uh, let's, lift, let's, let's hope to be lifted up, but instead of using science, let us use God's word and his incredible space force, okay? In order to access God's space force, we have to turn to a Luke, uh, excuse me, Luke 11, two through four. And it says, and he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So you guys are probably wondering, why did I choose forgive or nasa? for this first episode of Tapestry of Truth. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, 2020 has been a year like no other, and we find ourselves constantly challenged defending ourselves, whether it's in our beliefs or opinions, and it's to everyone. I mean, whether it be spiritual, personal, in the church, out of the church, in your home, your school, or wherever you are, um, I know you're experiencing hardship, and being able to forgive, or nasa, is one of God's most important gifts to us. So let's go over a few scriptures today, and let's find out why this is so important, and what it can mean for us personally in our lives. Let's hope for 2020 vision, and at the end, hopefully we can say, without a doubt, hindsight is 2020. Luke 23, 34 reads, then said Yeshua, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, when this was happening, that was an absolutely amazing prayer. And it had to take just absolute power and love because that was when Jesus was on the cross, crucified. He prayed, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Um... You know, little, they were casting lots on his clothes. They were dividing up the garments they ripped off of him before they nailed it, nailed him to it, okay? And little did they know that this was going to be 
the largest testimony in all of humanity as to the power and the go, uh, love that God has. So 1 Kings 8, 39 states that, Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knows, for thou, even thou only, knows the hearts of all the children of men. So God's space force, or as it's more properly known, the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, it's the helper whom the Father sends in Yeshua's name and is promised to teach all things and bring to your remembrance all that not I, but what the scripture said, as in I have said to you, according to John fourteen twenty six. And I always encourage you guys, get your own Bible, read along with me as I quote these scriptures. I am using King James Version, uh, com the actual study Bible. So it may be a little different from yours. It's an older translation, but follow along in the Bible, okay? Um, so we know that God knows our heart and he'll give us the Holy Spirit to teach us. But is that it? Is that all we have to do? Well, no, it, it's certainly not. And we can see that by turning to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, where it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, King David, he had something to say about forgiveness long, long time before Yeshua was ever nailed to the cross. In Psalms 32, 1, he wrote, Blessed is he whose trans transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Additionally, David had more to say in Psalms 87, 5, where he wrote, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plentiful in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. In Mark eleven twenty five and 26, we read, And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So wait, you're, you're telling me that God has conditions for those that Jesus prayed for on the cross? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but yes, he does. But it's not some long laundry list of things that are impossible to achieve. He's ready to forgive you. Simply, you just simply have to forgive and lift up others. And you in turn will be forgiven and lifted up. It's, it's pretty simple. And now you're saying, well, that's simple. I don't need to hear anymore. I'm done. Or do I? Well, you do. So follow me. Let's go a little farther, okay? Um, we're going to find out in God's word what it says. In Luke 6, 37, we read, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. So maybe not right now you're saying, well, that, that's not so bad. But yet others are already judging me the entire time. If they open the video because they're upset that I use NASA and Space Force in order to trick them into learning about God, and then I throw an e I threw in an Ewok joke too. So it's okay. It, that's okay. I still love you, and I will absolutely nasa you because at Ephesians four thirty two we read. And be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. As it says at 1 John uh, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, brothers and sisters, I come before you today. I'm a sinner from head to toe. I'm covered in tattoos, as you can see. 
I humble myself before you. And put more importantly, I humble myself before our almighty God in heaven and his wonderful and all-powerful son, Yeshua. I personally, I don't see colors or borders and I don't because God in turn, he doesn't see those. You know, we're all called to love one another, have patience, kindness, self-control, and in my opinion, and why we're here today, forgiveness. When you lose yourself in the world, you will find yourself in Christ. 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In verses 8 and 9 of the same chapter of 1 John, a few verses earlier, we read again, or we read, excuse me, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the light, excuse me, the true light now shine. He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. So brothers and sisters, the choice is yours. Are you a part of the dark side? Or are you in the light? Use the force. God's special force. His almighty Holy Spirit to prune you, to guide you, and usher you into the light. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tapestry of truth. And until next time, I love y'all. I really do. But you need to repent of your sins. You need to turn to God and let his glory and his forgiveness wash, just let it wash completely over you. Now, one more thing and I'm done. That's it for today. But I do want you guys to know that there are other possible Hebrew words for the, for the word forgive. I turned my Bible and I used the word given in my Bible. I do not wish to debate politics, government, science, flat or round earth, or any other subject with hate. I will, however, discuss with anyone on equal platform, but never in debate. Because personally, I feel that, you know, if we're, we're kind of taken away from God's word and his glory if we're debating. It's not supposed to be debated. It's supposed to be discussed, okay? We're not supposed to prove each other wrong. We're supposed to guide each other. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm saying open your Bibles. Follow after Christ, not me. I'm trying to follow him, okay? So on, additionally, I'm not a pope I'm not a bishop, a deacon, a pastor, a preacher, a holy father, an elder, a teacher, a rabbi, a scribe, a Pharisee, or any other religious leader term you want to throw at me. I'm your brother. I love you. I respect you. And I ask that each and every one of you respect the fact and do not respect that fact. And please don't argue. Don't argue with me. Don't argue with one another on the channel, okay? Let's keep God in open discussion by honoring him. Together, we can nasa one another and keep our eyes on God's coming kingdom. Lift one another up, stay humble, and let's start bearing good fruit together. I love you guys. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. And happy Sabbath.